The Marvels may go down as one of the most divisive Marvel Cinematic Universe movies made so far, and I don't think it deserves that at all, and I don't think that's because I don't think it is interesting, but it seems like what the Marvels has become is like an avatar for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? This movie does not just have to make everybody have a good time and be like a fun action comedy or whatever. It also has to prove the thesis of whether the Marvel Cinematic Universe should or should not continue to exist. I think the thing with the Marvels is <laughs> it is you get out of it what you put into it, right? It is whatever you want. Do you want a movie to prove that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is cooked, that it's over? You know, do you want to have a return of movies for adults and movies made without CGI and stuff? Uh, do you want DC to take over? Or do you want Disney to fail? Whatever you want. Do you want the Marvel Cinematic Universe to be over? This movie can prove that because it has all of the problems that some of these movies have that are that are not good. CGI isn't incredible. I think overall it's pretty good. Uh, it relies heavily on continuity from other movies and shows, although I would say it does do a significant amount of work to get you on board. But still, and I've, I've had this conversation with a couple people. There's a difference between understanding uh, who Miss Marvel is and enjoying spending time with her. Uh, like, can you, maybe you can understand how Monica's powers work, but will you care about her if you haven't seen the Disney Plus series that she's this? star of. I understand that argument. So there's a lot of reasons why this can fail. But then on the other side, if you want this to succeed, if you want this to be the breath of fresh air, the thing that Marvel needed, that shot in the arm that's going to get him out of this slump, it could be that too. That could be what the Marvels is for you. Because especially considering some of the low expectations brought on by Rotten Tomatoes and stuff, it could be a pretty fun time. Pretty breezy action comedy movie with some likable leads, some fun, some creative action sequences, some interesting, you know, locations and some characters that we already like seeing them again. Oh, they're fun being rewarded for watching these shows and having a pretty close connection to some of these characters. A fun little cameo or two that'll get you excited about the future. Like you can get both of those things out of this movie It is both imperfect, but also it's doing enough things right and doing them right in a way that I think is what we need as fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe coming off of Secret Invasion, that like it's it, it's so much the opposite of Secret Invasion, even though some of the problems are shared between them in terms of like, you know, editing and reshooting and, you know, clearly uh, the flow of the story is a little little weird and some of the consequences don't seem really linked up. It's, it's different enough from Secret Invasion that I think if you enjoy the Marvel movies and you really didn't like that, you like this. It's a shot in the arm. It's some youthful energy. You know, it's it's three women together as the leads of this movie which we don't get very often i think there's enough to like that if you want to like it you can and there is enough to dislike that if you want to dislike it you can dislike it i don't know anyone that has gone in wanting to have a good time hoping that they'll have a good time that has not this is just anecdotal it's coming from me but everybody that i've talked to that has been like man i hope this movie doesn't stink i'm not psyched about these reviews has left the movie going oh, i like that that was nice not perfect, but I had a great time. Like, it was, it was fun and, you know, nice and short and everything I was hoping for was there. Didn't change my life, but it was good. I've seen people who just do not like Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, for whatever reason, for its effect on filmmaking, for it being formulaic, for the idea of needing to watch multiple things and, you know, just kind of growing out of it, perhaps. Come out of this with it also kind of confirming everything they had thought about how the filmmaking process is broken, this, you know, Marvel Cinematic Universe is taking this director that, you know, people like to really compromise their vision, a lot of the character development doesn't quite work for them, a lot of the connections to Disney Plus shows don't work, and a lot of the connections to the other universe don't feel like they pay off or will ever be paid off in interesting ways. So I think the tricky part of the Marvels is that, like, you can get whatever you want out of it. I personally wanted a movie that was fun. I wanted a movie that didn't make me go, oh my God, this is a, this is a failure. Like Marvel is cooked. And even though they didn't make very much money on this movie and, you know, I think the writer strike is definitely, or the actor strike and the writer strike maybe because of reshoots and stuff, but the actor strike for sure is going to have some effect on, you know, that. I don't think the box office for this movie being as low as it is tells the whole story. And I definitely don't think that means Marvel's done. If anything, I think this could be like, not a good thing for Marvel, but it does give them a underdog 
little little bit of that. They get they get that moment to have that kind of rebuilding period where they go, all right, we took our time and we we're looking at the movies. We rewrote this one, rewrote this one. We're coming back strong. Deadpool three and some TV shows and you know, like this is the, I think. You know, Green Goblin will say to you, the only thing they love more than the hero is to see their hero fall, fail, die trying, all that stuff. And in that moment, he's trying to trick Spider-Man into doing bad guy stuff. So, yeah, not completely true. But I do think we enjoy that narrative of like, they're the big dog. Oh, and they got taken back down to Earth. And then, oh, they're really stuck. Like, they're not doing well. Oops, something changed. Ah, oh, now they're back on top again. Like, I think that exists. And I do think if Marvel gets like two or three hits in a row after this, and I, I even think Loki season two counts as one of them then they'll be in pretty good shape i think in general this movie is pretty entertaining i don't know anybody who i would tell not to watch it i also think because of the hour and a half investment i think it makes it a lot easier to like to say yeah watch it no fun they'll have a good time they fly around they make some jokes there's some good good humor good action sequences some pretty creative stuff that i really enjoyed and like i'm sure i'll be thinking about for a while you know the villain won't change your life and the stakes of it are kind of confusing or not confusing but it's just like i don't know it's not something like guardians where it is so personal and this really built up thing like a character comes in she's like i'm a bad guy i'm gonna kill everybody with all the things and she's a reason but it's not you know i wouldn't say the plot is why you go to this movie you go to this movie for the relationships for some hijinks colorful characters costumes all that stuff like and that is here i think this does a great job the only two things i heard from every reviewer were that kamala khan iman Vellani is great and that darben zawi ashton is not a, a very interesting character uh, i don't think any of those people that didn't like her were really commenting on her performance they were just like this isn't really working for me i do agree that like iman Vellani was great uh very fun like obviously we knew people didn't watch Miss Marvel knew she was good in that and knew that it was like we can't wait till she gets on the big screen for one of these um but she is like an energy that's hard to fake uh and like an you know kind of an infectiousness where you do see her get excited about these guys and it does actually kind of feel like a kid getting excited about meeting you know a hero like the bit there's a bit that I won't, I won't spoil um that comes near the very end where Kamala says a line that is very much a callback to an earlier thing and the way that she says it is exactly like a fan mimicking that character would say that but not necessarily someone mimicking how that character would say it in real life someone mimicking what it sounds like to watch that character say it in a movie i know how confusing this sounds but people that know what i'm talking about know what i'm talking about and i guess it, it is interesting because it's hard to not feel that like that that she does you know enjoy these and that helps a lot. I think that Brie Larson was very good in this. I, I think that, like, they maybe resolved some of the things she was doing a little bit too quickly. But I do like how they made her a little too pragmatic and, you know, feel bad about some things. They I, I liked how kind of, I don't know, human she felt in this. And I think Monica was okay. I think she was interesting. I still don't quite think I have a handle on, like, what exactly her deal is. But I think there's more than nothing. I think a lot of her character in this movie was defined by her relationship with, like, I think a lot of that benefited, helped Carol, like, humanize her. But in the end, like, I think we already knew all that stuff about Monica, so it's like, more of that doesn't really change everything. I think that everything with Fury was great, and uh, everything with the parents was great, and uh, a lot of the stuff that happened in space was fun. And spoiler alert from here on in. I wish we spent more time in Prince Dion's planet, uh, just because it was fun. I think we could have had a little bit more fun doing the dancing and the singing and stuff. Uh, as for someone who has read the comic that that's loosely based on, in that version of the comic, Prince Jan's whole, you know, planet rhymes. Uh, and this it was like musical planet. I would like to see a little bit more of that, but I thought, I thought it was cute. I like the idea that there's just weird planets out here that we've never really spent time on, but they got weird stuff going on, their own customs and history with Carol that is cool. I, I did enjoy, I will say, I did not like Zoe Ashton either. I liked what her character was doing. And I think it was interesting. And I think the idea of this movie was interesting like this idea of these characters forgiving each other carol having this difficult you know responsibility expectations set by everyone that she can't really live up to either with her being like the perfect aunt or the perfect like superhero um it does seem like part of the objective of writing this movie was we want to break down carol humanize carol 
Uh, and I think they definitely did that. The the power switching, I think, was pretty fun. It's, that's really is the thing. Like, sure, there were some editing things I didn't love. And yeah, pacing wise, I think they probably could have spaced some things out a little bit better. Uh, I think most of the stuff with scrolls was pretty stupid. I'm I'm shocked that we even had them in this after Secret Invasion. Like, obviously, they're already in the movie, so there's not very much you can do. But like, man, it's so funny how much this movie technically connects to Secret Invasion because it's like they're scrolls. So, and there's peace talks, just like they said at the end of that show. But like Nick Fury's wife, who he just moved back up to space with, she's not in this at all. Nobody talks about any of the stuff that happened in Russia. Nobody talks about Gaia, the scroll leader who has all the superpowers, like just completely ignored her, uh, which is fair. They should ignore most of what happened on that show. But it's just kind of interesting that they to, to see that in practice. You know, like I think the editing was a little bit frantic. And like, I think the way that we were switching scene to scene to scene, I under, I'd appreciate where people said like, this was a little much for me, a little jarring. Partially, I think that was intentional, but I also think partially it does feel like there was editing that just happened um, that maybe, you know, certain things needed to come earlier than maybe they would have liked uh, to help everything make more sense. Um, I do think most of the fight choreo was pretty good. I think the music choices were fine. I don't know. The cameos were good. Let's say let's do cameos one by one. So further spoiler for cameos. Uh, Tessa Thompson cameo, weird. I don't mind it. I don't like that the scrolls are back on Earth as another plot point because they just left Earth or something. Like, it, that really doesn't mesh with Secret Invasion. Also, I think it's weird that um, she kissed Carol on the cheek because, like, it's just another... We're so close to just doing one, you know, like, full something commitment to anything related to, like, these characters having these relationships. They get to talk about it a lot, but, like, I mean... This and this is one of those fan ships which I don't have too much investment in. But I do think like these two characters having a relationship would make a lot of sense, and it seems like both of the actors are into it, or at least have, you know, talked positively about. It. So I don't know, just have her give her a big old kiss on the lips or something, and then leave. Like I don't know, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Uh, but I think they could have maybe used it um, at this point. I also think the cameo in the post credit scene, which I will say. If you're reading this review again, this is the these are the bigger ones. So I will say, you know, this is when you go. Overall, I say I enjoyed it. You see it in the theater, see it at Disney Plus. You could probably, you know, go and get an empty theater right now. So that's pretty nice. Um, I will say the only the the two post credit scenes are really you know pre credit scene and post credit scene. Pre credit scene, great. You know, this is the one where Kamala does an Fury impression to Kate Bishop. I love that. Obviously, I have a lot of thoughts about the Young Avengers. I'm gonna have a video out pretty soon about that. And I think there's a lot you can do with that team. Uh, the <laughs> Spectrum and Binary and Beast scene, I think is good. I, I actually do. I think the Beast CGI is fine. Not perfect, but fine. Uh, I do think when you look at what the multiverse has been, they are really like kind of getting into this and like doing things like this, like introducing one character from the X-Men or whatever, with like a surprising amount of restraint, honestly. Like, we've seen flashes of it, but, like, you know, there was not a moment in this movie where Monica fell through the multiverse and saw clips of all the different movies like they did in The Flash or, you know, the Titans show. That is something that I think they've just shown one kind of character that's fun to go, oh, you guys remember him? He's in there. Uh, I liked the way he looked. I thought that was great. And I like that she's in the X-Men universe now, and that is a universe, and, like, these are all you know, like connected. It does feel like they have a plan. And I think we've kind of heard some of the big picture stuff for the plan, especially how Deadpool 3 fits into this. And like, I don't know, I think it's kind of fun. I think they've been holding out on us for, for the payoff for some of this stuff. And like, you know, not having an Avengers movie in phase four or even phase five, it's a lot to ask for people. But I do think that when phase six shows up and these Avengers movies start happening, we're going to be pretty into it uh, because of how much they've slowly introduced like Tobey Maguire and you know Hank McCoy and Wolverine and Deadpool and whoever else they start throwing in there so I don't know I liked it yeah I don't know overall I think this movie was pretty good going in with lower expectations because of the Rotten Tomato scores I had a very good time I think that everybody that worked on it did a very good job I, I think the effects were good I think the acting is fun could it have been longer sure but also these movies don't need to be incredibly long could it have been cheaper? Yes. I think like not and that's not saying cut corners, but I'm saying like I think a shorter, less event movie is fine. I think part of what I like and I'm excited for about Blade, if they ever make it, 
is the aim is to make it under $100 million, I believe, and that's great. So many more they should be. Because a $45 million, $50 million opening weekend shouldn't be a failure, right? Like, that's a lot of money. $110 million globally or something like that. Like, that, for a movie that costs $100 million to make, that, that's pretty good, you know? You, you'll make your money back if you do, you know, moderately well if people like the movie in the future. But, you know, with some of these Marvel movies costing so much money, they're pretty much set up to fail unless they're incredible successes, which not every movie can be, and that is a shame. I am someone also who loves cats, so I appreciate any movie that has a cat, and this one has quite a cat in it, even though it's not technically a cat. I will say overall, it does, this movie does make me more excited for the future of the MCU. And I'll put a big asterisk next to that, knowing that Deadpool 3 is the only movie we're getting next year, and they're really taking their time with the rest of these to fully produce them and you know reshoot or re- edit or whatever like i think 2025 could be really fun fantastic four captain america brave new world thunderbolts blade if those four movies come out in 2025 that'd be awesome like and if like two or three of them are like really good to good to like let's say two two or three of them are 80 plus rotten tomatoes that's that's so fun I think Fantastic Forecasting announcement's probably going to come out soon, and that's going to be really fun, too. I'm really excited for that. So, you know, I think that, let's say, overall, the Marvels probably could have been better, but because of the expectations set by early reviewers and the Rotten Tomatoes score, uh, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. And I think most of the people that enjoy most Marvel movies will have fun. And, like, to be fair, I don't think this is worse than Thor, one or thor 2 for sure and i think thor 1 and thor 2 i'm betting those reviewers that absolutely hated this movie like gave it a zero out of ten if they had reviewed thor 1 they'd probably give it a five or six you know maybe four but not a zero uh and i think it has to do with how successful marvel has been but i do think when you just judge this movie on the merits it's, it's okay you know it's it's not bad and if you like the characters, if you like one of the actors, one of the characters, you have a good time. Sam Jackson's better in this than he is in the Secret Invasion show. And uh, everybody that is working in the Miss Marvel show is working well here. Carol is better. Monica's about the same. So, yeah, I'm excited for the, the break we get. Although I guess What If is coming soon. That Deadpool 3 in a couple of months or whatever, you know, in May or something, June, July, whenever that is. And then, you know, we'll see what the future looks like. But... Yeah, it could be much worse. I, I I had a good time. So thank you everybody for listening to this review. And I hope you enjoy the Marvels or not. Whatever. <laughs>